Hey everybody, it's Meredith Miller with Inner Integration. Today, the message I have for you is about using your body to recognize a toxic person or situation. It is so important to learn how to listen to your body as your barometer of truth. Your gut feeling level of intuition comes from the body, which is also the subconscious. This is one of your most powerful tools to protect yourself against manipulative, abusive, and toxic people. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about how this works today. I'm going to talk about you know, how you can learn to speak the language of your body because this is so beneficial for you to understand yourself better so that you can rebuild your self-trust after the abuse, so you can feel a greater sense of self-control over your body, your health, your life, your emotions. And the bonus here is this is like kryptonite for gaslighting. When you trust your body and you have the tangible proof that something isn't right, even when that other person is the most skilled gaslighter in the world, they will not be able to fool you. So, you know, when a person is questioning, you know, your, your understanding that something's not right for you and you're like, no thanks. Maybe they invite you to go somewhere and you're like, no thanks. And they're like, well, why don't you want to blah, blah, blah. You can say something like, well, several reasons, but most importantly, because my body is saying no. So I'm going to talk about some of the ways your body might be saying no. But this is really important that you learn to set these boundaries for yourself you know, it set the standard first that I'm going to trust my body first and foremost. That's number one. I will trust my body first and foremost. And number two, you have to be willing to set that boundary with other people when something happens and your body says no, even if your mind thinks well, nothing seems to be really wrong with that or maybe I would even enjoy it or oh, just be more fun and go along with it. You know how the mind came up with all that stuff. But the bottom line is when your body says no, you just say no. This is going to help relieve you from the pressure that you can get from people who like want to push and push and push you to do something that you don't want to do and they keep trying to get you to do it. And every reason that you give them, they have a counter reason for that, like why that reason is null and void or doesn't matter or, you know, it's really not the way you think. It just takes all that away and you say, well, several reasons, but most importantly, because my body is saying no. And that's it. You don't have to argue or negotiate or keep having that conversation with, with that person because you've already said no. So it's really important to recognize how your body communicates to you. We're all a little unique, but what you're going to notice is that we all have a lot in common. So I want to talk about some of the most common ways that your body could be warning you that something isn't right. These are things I felt myself. These are things I've heard from clients, from friends, from family members who are going through this kind of abuse or still dealing with an abusive person or moving forward after the abuse and questioning you know, new people that they're meeting or even reevaluating old relationships that have been in their life for a long time. So this can be really useful when you're observing a new person, like you go on a date or you meet a new friend or you're at a networking event, which is a really great place to practice this, by the way, because there's tons of people and the whole thing is just about having little conversations with people. It's a really great way to practice reading other people and really reading your body and how your body reads those other people. Um, but, you know, you want to practice these things and recognize what your body is saying to see how you feel about that person or how you feel about the idea that they just presented to you, some kind of invitation maybe. Um, maybe you want to recognize, you know, is this person worthy of your trust? Maybe you want to evaluate this person for toxicity, you know, who's already been in your life for a really long time. You just, you're getting this feeling like maybe something's not right. And now you're trying to get a new level of understanding around it. So you can use this for many different situations. So let's talk about these common ways. The first one is the ick factor. Something just feels icky about that person or what that person said or did. And it's really hard to pinpoint the epicenter in your body. It's just kind of this overall sense of ick. That's one. Another one is your stomach drops. Like you're having a conversation and suddenly like it's like your stomach like falls on the floor. Like what is that sensation? It's like something's not right. And it's usually because someone is deceiving you or you're in sudden fear of what's happening because something's not right. Like, Things on the surface are not as they appear. 
Um, I, I notice this like almost 100% of the time when someone is lying and deceiving me. And I never know it in the time because I never get confirmation right away. It's in retrospect. But I always note to myself, okay, my stomach dropped when he said this or that. And there might be no other rational reason to understand why I felt the way I felt. Like, for example, maybe your stomach suddenly drops and you sense like you're never going to see this person again. And you don't know why. And then that person ghosts you. You know, and later and in retrospect, you realize your stomach fell because what they said to you in that moment was totally false. It wasn't authentic at all. Your body already knew that person was going to ghost you. You just had no reason to believe that yet because it wasn't actually happening and they were telling you a big lie. So anytime your stomach drops, immediately hit pause on that situation and really start observing what's going on, what did the person just say, what was the thought that I just had, what was the event that just took place and note that somewhere in your brain, write it down because in several hours or several days or several weeks, that's going to make a lot more sense. Another thing could be eye twitches when your eye just like involuntarily spasms. It's usually, so if it's on the left side, it's usually like you're not saying what you feel or you're not able to see the big picture of something. Um, when it's on the right side, it's usually about being perfectionist or not taking action because you're afraid you're going to mess it up or you don't want to make a mistake or maybe you know what you need to do but you're just not taking the action probably because you're afraid that you won't do it just right. So when the eyes are twitching, something is going on in your life. You want to journal that. You want to write it down. Any of these things that happen, you really want to write these down in the moment because you might forget. And this is such a validating thing to help you learn that language. It is like learning a foreign language, only it's your native language. You've just forgotten what your native language was. Like imagine you were born in China and you got adopted by a family in, say, Michigan, and you grew up speaking English, and you never knew Chinese, even though it was the native language where you were from, and it was what your parents spoke and everything. So it's like going back to China and learning how to speak Chinese. Another way is a sudden exhaustion or almost narcolepsy, like when you're just falling asleep, when you're hanging out with someone, or maybe right afterward. Sometimes I'll notice this in the moment, but more often it's like as soon as I leave, you notice just how draining that person was in your energy. And maybe it was because they were talking, 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 talking the whole time. Or maybe it was like the drama effect of what they were talking about. Or maybe it was just their energy in that like vampiric sort of way that they were just trying to take your energy. Those are big signs that that's a toxic person. Anxiety is another one. Anxiety is when your chest tightens. Maybe you get some tingling, fluttering, palpitations. Your heart starts racing. You get a little short of breath. Maybe you even sense that there's some fear, but you don't know what the fear is yet. It just kind of comes on out of nowhere, but it's not out of nowhere. Now, let me also differentiate in the early stages of PTSD recovery, and I talked about this in my book, The Journey, in that very early first stage, there are intense and a lot amount of symptoms and anxiety, panic attacks, dread attacks. It's like all over the place. It's not necessarily something's wrong in that moment. It's just you're trying to resolve and get back to a sense of equilibrium after what you've just escaped. So this is going to be a lot harder to recognize in stage one when you're still in the middle of those really intense symptoms because it'd be hard to differentiate is this one of those symptoms or is this my body, my barometer, my intuition telling me something is off? This is a lot easier down the road once those initial heavy symptoms wear off because it's no longer the constant, right? You feel pretty good most of the time and then all of a sudden you get a phone call and maybe like an invitation to go somewhere and all of a sudden your body goes into this state. Your body's saying no, your body doesn't want to go. Maybe it sounds like a lovely invitation doesn't seem to be anything wrong with it. Maybe you even want to hang out with that person, but it's not that person. It's the invitation. It's the thing where you're going, the other people, something like that. Your body is not okay with. Um, another one is panic attack. Panic attack is next level anxiety. This can feel like a heart attack. It can feel like you're going to die. It can feel like you can't get enough air. It can feel like you want to jump out of your clothes, jump out of your skin. 
You might spontaneously break out into sweating and feel like you're overheating, or you might suddenly lose all of your body heat and it's like you're shivering to the bone. So these can be these can definitely be signs that something is off, something's wrong, you don't want to do something, your body's just telling you no. Again, it's going to be very hard to differentiate in stage one. Another thing is sudden nosebleeds. Um, this could happen maybe when you're thinking and thinking about something and you're really worried about it, you're scared about it, or you're trying to justify why you don't want to have to do it and you're feeling angry that this person is trying to pressure you into doing something you don't want to do and your nose just starts gushing blood. Like you didn't get hit in the face, like nothing happened, but you're just gushing blood. That's a sign something's not right. Now, there could be physiological reason as well, like blood pressure. However, your blood pressure, maybe your blood pressure suddenly spiked because you were stressed. Like if that's not a constant thing for you, like a chronic illness, it just suddenly spiked because some idea really stressed you out and then that caused the nose to bleed. Another sign of this barometer could be a sudden pain in your body with no reason. Like you just hugged someone and a few seconds or a minute later, you have stabbing pain in your guts that won't go away for hours or longer. Or maybe you were just thinking about someone and you turn your head to the side and suddenly like your neck freaked out and now you have this horrible pain, something's out of place, it won't go away and it hurts to turn your head to the side and literally all you did was turn your head. It wasn't like you got a whiplash or something crazy happened. These kinds of sudden pains like that with no real reason, where is this coming from, what's going on, pay attention. It was something you were just thinking about or it was that person that you just had contact with. Um, you could be like, you know, I mentioned the gut pain that you can get from hugging someone. It could also be like a sudden pain in your lower back and that might last for days. Like it, it wasn't bothering you and all of a sudden now it hurts really bad. These kinds of weird things can happen. And kind of along that line, but another category are psychosomatic illnesses and issues. This could be uh, temporary things like hives. You know, you just you break out into hives, start itching, rashes, blisters, like for no reason, like you didn't get burned or something. Um, it could be that sudden muscular tension or even like a knot that suddenly appears in your back or your neck or somewhere and you're like where's this where's this even coming from like you didn't go crazy at the gym or some kind of sport activity like it just came out of nowhere these short term things are representing something in the moment that bothered you so it was usually a thought that you just had or a contact you just had whether in person physically or on the phone or you're thinking about what you're going to say to that person about something then there's the more chronic long-term things like injuries and chronic illnesses. These are usually caused more by long-term toxicity in your life, a long-term person in your life. And you've got fibromyalgia for years. You've got chronic fatigue system sy syndrome for years. And your doctors are like, well, we don't really know where it's coming from. You know, they can't really give you much information. Maybe there's some other chronic illness that you've got and it just doesn't go away. And the doctors are like, yeah, I don't, I don't really know. We tried everything, basically. These are coming from some kind of psychosomatic thing. When you're in a relationship with an abusive person, your body eventually starts to shut down, most so once your mind wakes up. Because the whole thing about ignorance is bliss is kind of true to a point. You don't want to live your life in ignorance because you're living your life in ignorance, you know, and, and not realizing the self-actualization levels of, of human life. But there is sort of this, this almost this protection of the fool, where the fool is almost protected a little, the fool meaning the ignorant, right? It is kind of protected for a period of time when they don't know but as soon as you find out what's going on, narcissistic abuse, so-and-so is a narcissist, a psychopath, etc., now your body is like, you better get out of there. You better get a plan and you better get out. And if you stay, that's when you're going to notice your body takes a toll for the worse. Like it just really starts shutting down. And it's very sad to see that happen to people. But that is absolutely a sign that you have got to get yourself out. When your health is falling apart like that, you got to get out. There's two books that can help you with this. One is Louise Hayes. 
heal your body. This is a classic. It is so good. She goes into all the different parts of the body, different different illnesses, different symptoms, different vertebrae, decoding what's going on. Another one is The Body is the Barometer of the Soul by Annette Noontil. This is fantastic as well. Also kind of got like a map of different areas of the body, um, you know, telling you what each vertebrae, what each bone can represent, what each illness or part of the body when things show up like inflammation or this and that. It can really help you get your intuition, understanding really what's going on. But the most important question do you want to ask yourself when any of these things that I just mentioned happen? One, what was I just thinking about before that happened? You know, before the pain, before the panic, before whatever symptom. What was I just thinking? And stop everything until you backtrack and come up with what was that thought? You know, and if you can't remember in that moment, darn, right? But remind yourself, keep reminding yourself to keep asking that question. The more it becomes a conscious effort to remember to backtrack immediately, the easier it's going to be to be able to backtrack. Because, you know, sometimes your mind might be going a thousand miles a minute and you went from one topic to another so quickly, you don't know which one it was. But this practice of continually asking yourself is going to help you isolate that. Then you want to say, what does that want to tell me? So what does my stomach want to tell me? What does this anxiety want to tell me? What does my eye twitching want to tell me? Whatever is going on, what does this want to tell me? And be still and listen. You might want to close your eyes and sit in meditation for a little bit to really focus on, on what that is. Now, the good signs, like when your body is telling you this is good, like I like this interaction, you're going to feel more relaxed, you're going to feel more at ease, you're going to feel more comfortable, other than, of course, you know, that little bit of nervousness that you get when you meet new people or when you meet somebody, when you're hanging out with somebody that you really like, you might notice you get a little, you know, nervous and tense, but for the most part, you feel comfortable. And there's this bliss response to touch and to eye gazing. So when you're looking into someone's eyes, this is a good connection, it's like your body feels this kind of bliss. Like it doesn't feel on edge, it doesn't feel nervous and anxious, it just feels kind of blissed out. And especially when they touch you, you can really notice that. You know, how does your body feel? So when you're letting someone new touch you, be sure like you're really connecting with that feeling. How do I feel right now? What is my body saying about how this touch feels? So my question to you is, has your body ever given you a sign, like one of the ones I mentioned, something I didn't mention, where you were in trouble or you were with someone who was deceiving you or draining you, some kind of toxic person, maybe when you knew that your ex was lying or cheating and you're trying to confront them, please feel free to share those in the comments below. I think that's going to be really helpful for other people because it's so validating to see like, oh my God, that happened to me or oh my God, I didn't even think about when that happened, that meant this or that and now I can see the big picture. It can be really helpful for other people. So I'm sending you all a big hug.